VOC 2010 legislation. Volatile organic compounds are chemicals that evaporate into the atmosphere. They can be found in a variety of commercial and industrial products like car exhausts, cleaning products, aerosols and also paint. VOCs contribute to air pollution and have been linked to global warming, so it's no surprise that the EU has passed legislation to limit the amount of them in paint. Since January 1, 2010, paint manufacturers aren't allowed to produce non-VOC 2010 compliant paints. Merchants won't be allowed to sell any non-compliant paint after January 1, 2011. The new legislation doesn't affect you and you'll be allowed to use non-compliant paint even after 2011. This film will show you how our products have changed to comply with the legislation and what this means to you. What have Dulux Trade done? We have already been working hard to make our products 2010 compliant by reducing the level of VOCs in our solvent-based paints, varnishes and wood stains, as well as making the important packaging changes which help you to choose a 2010 compliant product. The only exceptions are water-based paints, which were already VOC 2010 compliant. How does this affect you? Solvent-based trim products are changing, so you will notice some differences in how they are applied. However, despite these changes, all of our 2010 compliant formulations still achieve industry-leading performance in the attributes that matter, like opacity, sheen, durability, and an excellent finish. You just need to put them on in a slightly different way. Dulux Trade Decorator Trainer, Peter Doyle, will show you how it's done. So these are some of our Volatile Organic VOC uh, New Products 2010 Compliant Coatings. Undercoat, gloss, eggshell, and satin wood. One of the differences you will see is when you take the lid off, the actual product seems just a little bit more stodgy, a little bit more sort of thicker in the can. So it's very, very important that you actually do give the product a really good stir prior to use. Whether it be the undercoat, the gloss, or the eggshell, you do need to do this thoroughly and properly. So as far as application goes of the 2010 undercoat, very little change from your previous uh, undercoats. It may feel a little bit stodgier or a little bit heavier, but I guarantee you it flows out lovely and you put it on exactly the same. Once you've put the product on, just make sure you avoid getting heavy, heavy edges and things like that. One of the other things you'll notice is that as this 2010 undercoat dries, it has got quite a nice sheen. This is actually a major benefit to applying your gloss. I'm now going to rub this, this undercoat down. And what I would strongly advise is instead of using the standard uh, sandpaper. Because this product is higher solids, it means it stays a little bit soft, a little bit um, sort of soft to the touch. And if I use this standard paper on here, what I might well do is scratch it. And the last thing I want is those scratches coming through to the gloss. So what I would strongly recommend would be using wet and dry. This is a 600 grade wet and dry. When I rub down it will be wet, so I'll just dip it into the water and just give it a gentle rub over. What this does is two things. A, it keeps the dust down, and B, it will give you a really, really super, fantastic smooth finish for putting on your gloss. So again, like all of our 2010 trim paints, Solventborn uh, trim paints, it's very important that we do actually stir the product thoroughly. And again, application is exactly the same as how you'd normally use any, any gloss paint. Put the product on, lay it off and then finally lay it off and you've got a really nice finish. So now we come on to our 2010 eggshell. A couple of things you need to know about this. This is actually now a trim paint so you can no longer use this on broad wall areas. We will find that the drying time and the recoat time again we're now looking at 20, uh, 16 to 24 hours. And as I said, the only other thing you'll notice is that the actual sheen level will just be slightly higher than standard. But this will dry back to a standard eggshell within five to seven days. One of the things you do need to consider though is when you actually, not to get too heavy in creases like this, areas like this, in uh, mouldings and beadings, 
because if you do get a build up there, it tends to, or it can tend to crack and craze, and this is caused by the, the product being just too heavy, especially when we talk about the uh, 16 to 24 hours recuts. But other than that, an absolutely gorgeous product to apply and looks really nice once you've done the surface preparation. So that's the 2010 eggshell. If you wanted an alternative to that, you can use the 2010 satin wood. Application wise, it's exactly the same. It's a 2010 compliant product, absolutely no difference in application at all. There are also some packaging changes you need to know about. When you see this VOC 2010 compliant logo on the front of our solvent based paint cans, you know it falls within the legislative guidelines. You can also check the VOC content on the back of the can by looking at the phrasing.